This is a video on the SD to IEC. Um, I'm going to show you how to play games that you've downloaded off the internet on your original Commodore 64 computer. I'm also going to show you how to load double disc images if you have to swap the discs and stuff like that. I'll show you how to actually do that. And finally I'm going to show you how to run utilities using the SD to IEC. First of all, full disclosure, um, I was sent this uh, SD to IEC by Retro3000.com. I've been uh, looking for one for a while. I've been uh, planning a series on the Commodore 64 and uh, this opens a lot of doors for me. It, um, it essentially allows me to transfer files from my PC to my original hardware, the original Commodore 64. Um, I just wouldn't be able to do this without uh, one of these and uh, so I'm really happy. I'm actually had a lot of fun. I've only had it for a couple of days now and already I've been doing all sorts of stuff that I wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Um, so, but if you're thinking about buying this, you might want to keep in mind that um, I was sent this. I didn't have to pay for it, so maybe my comments would have been different had I paid full price. But honestly, I wouldn't endorse it. I wouldn't make a video about it if um, I didn't feel that it was it, it does what it, uh, it's claiming to do and it, it does it really well. Um, so, but before, um, I'm going to show you a few things uh, that it does. But first of all, let's just take a look at the actual uh, uh, kit itself. At the front of the machine we have three buttons. The first from the left is a reset button and the other two buttons are disc swapping buttons. There are also a couple of LED lights to let you know when it's saving and loading. And there's an SD slot for your SD card which I'll show you how to prepare later. Aesthetically I really like how this unit actually looks. I don't think it would be out of place back in 1987 beside an actual Commodore 64 and that's a big plus for me. A lot of times if you're buying this sort of thing off eBay, it just comes as a circuit board with no housing. And I really think the housing finishes this one off. It makes it look like its own thing, but at the same time not looking out of place with the original hardware. To connect it up to your Commodore 64, plug the power connector into the cassette port and plug the black serial connector into your serial port. Another feature I really like about this model is that you can daisy chain your tape deck. If you want to keep your tape deck plugged in, you can actually plug it into the back of the power connector. That way you're not having to pull in and out these things too often if you want to have it set up that both your tape deck and the SD to IC works. To get the files for the SD card, go to retro3000.com. Um, there's more information here about the SD to IC um, and there's a download section. So uh, one of the downloads come with uh, just the necessary files in the manual and the other comes with some games. So uh, these are the two files here. I'll just open them both up. Um, one has, let's see, okay, this one has no, uh, well actually it does have one game, maybe just to test it. And uh, it has just the, the small files that you need to put on your SD card. Now depending on which uh, you, uh, console you're using this for, you could have a VIC-20, so it's FB-20, um, the Commodore 64 is FB-64, and then the Commodore 126 is FB-126. There is a useful manual here, actually, I'll open that up. Um, and as you'd imagine, the uh, the download with games just comes with a bunch of games over here, which you can use. Um, uh, just drop, just drag and drop them onto your SD card. I'll show you how to set up your SD card, but here is a little manual. Um, nice little guide, just an introduction, and it shows you um, what the different uh, buttons and stuff do. So, which I've already shown you anyway. Um, Okay, so I'll show you now how to actually set up your SD card. This is how I've set mine up anyway. You'll want your um, little FB file to be in the main um, part of the SD card. Don't like drag it into a folder or anything like that because it might be harder to find. In fact, I think I did do that by mistake once and uh, my Commodore didn't find it because I didn't really know what path it was in stuff. Just to make things easier, leave it out in the open so that it's easier to find. Um, what else do I have? So I have uh, Metal Warrior 4. This is a multi-disc um, file, which we'll go into more later. Um, this is how it's set up. Uh, I have my games folder, which I just have a variety of games I've put on there. And I have my tape alignment. This is a, a utility that I'll show you how to run later on too. So now that we have the files we need on the SD card, let's plug it into the Commodore 64 and set it up. 
So first of all, we have to tell uh, the Commodore 64 to find the SD to IEC. And the way you would do that is the same as you would tell it how to find a, an actual real disk drive. Um, so first we type load, then quotation mark, FB64, and then quotation mark again. Um, the FB64, that is your, uh, that's the little file that we dropped onto the, um, the USB. Then we hit comma eight, comma one, and then we press return. Then we have to just simply type run to run the program. Okay, so once you've um, loaded up your menu, uh, we can actually access this. You can press the CRSR um, to scroll through it, or you can actually use your uh, control stick to scroll through it. Um, depending on which way you've set up, I've set up a little folder here called games that I can go down to and select. It'll load up the drop down for I've got a whole pile of games on there. Um, let's see which one I'll load up by. Uh, let's just load up for now. Let's load up uh, Rick Dangerous. So it's one of my favorite games. Uh, let's hit enter. Now, what you'll find is even though if you only drop one file into the, um, the little folder, sometimes it breaks up into a few different files, but um, usually it's the top file. Um, sometimes uh, it depends, but you may have to try a couple to get it to work. Okay, so we'll have this little. Um, this is a cracked, whenever you download these games off the internet, people have cracked these games. So you'll probably get stuff like this. Um, just skip it. For some reason people tell you who cracked it and um, it'll tell you to uh, press space to read some stuff that I don't want to read or press run stop to start. So just press run stop and it should, okay, and then it asks you if you want to do um, high score uh, reset the high scores. There we have it. Load it up. Um, and I can play here. Play a little bit of Rick Dangerous. This is one of my favorite games on the system. It's like kind of an Indiana Jones ripoff, but it's really fun. Okay, so this is just me showing you that it works. Yeah. It's a really fun game. Um, and it's really simple to load games on it, that's what I love about it. Um, but we'll move on to the more complicated things like uh, getting discs to load that have uh, more than one disc. Sometimes games came in two discs, so there's like a disc swapping thing. So I'll show you how to do that on the SD to IEC. So this is my double disc file that I got from Retro3000.com. Um, I just got this one as a test really, just to try out the disc swapping technique. Um, so I'll go ahead, I'll, I'll link this file in the description as well so you can try it yourself. Essentially all you need is your two or however many uh, disks, sometimes there'll be like three um, files and then you'll need an autoswap.lst file. Uh, just to show you what's going on here, if I rename this, this is essentially a text file. So if I rename this to uh, .txt, we can open this up in Notepad and you can see what this file contains is just it's simply just the name of the, the different disk images. Um, so as long as you have uh, it going like this, and like let's say if there was if there was three disks here, we would just do this and put it as a three. And as long as that's what your file names are, like these these file names here, then uh, that's how it works. It's as simple as that, really. Um, I'm going to undo what I've just done. In fact, I'll just close it down and undo that and then it's changed back to a .lst file. That's really all you need to get the disk swapping to work, that file there. Okay, so once you have your file all set up and ready to go, uh, we scroll down. I've saved the file in, yeah, here it is here, Metal Warrior 4. Um, just select the top file and uh, you'll see that I have the auto swap lst file on the top there and then we're just going to select the first um, MW41, so hit start on that. All right, this is just the loading screen. It will um, come up. What we're looking out for here is eventually the game will tell us uh, to swap disks, and the way to get around that, obviously we don't have disks to swap in or anything like that. There's a button um, on the side that we're gonna press. Uh, whenever the thing uh, tells us, there's a little green light right now, this is just uh, telling us that it's um, reading something off the memory card, I believe, That's, I'm sort of guessing here. Uh, it will go red 
uh, whenever you need to di uh, swap the discs. Um, actually, probably it'll go red if there's something that's went wrong as well. Uh, if you probably sometimes I heard that um, if your SD card isn't in enough, um, it'll go red. So maybe you just have to tweak about that. I've never had any problems with the SD card actually. Um, I was using a really cheap uh, one gigabyte one for a while and it worked fine. Okay, here we have the the um, the thing is flashing red. So it's now telling me on screen, uh, please insert disc two. So I'm gonna press this button, uh, the third button or the first button from the right. And I got a little green flash there, so I'm going to hit fire, and let me check again. No, it didn't hit fire, right? Okay, I needed to, I pressed it quite a few times there just to be sure, and then I hit fire, and you now see that it is loading. Um, well, you know what? Okay, here you are. So it's load up. Um, press fire, space to enter the menu. I've never actually played this game before. Um, I contacted uh, the person that sent me this and they um, sent me this file because they knew uh, this file definitely worked. It's a good way to test uh, whether or not the thing is working and uh, yeah, it's working fine for me now. So there you are, it's loaded up. Um, it works fine. Um, I'm looking forward to getting games like uh, Castlevania working. And there's also a couple of other games that are like multi-disc uh, games. Um, and I think it's just going to be a case of finding some uh, some good files that will work with me. So finally I'm just going to show uh, how to run utilities on this uh, piece of kit. Um, I've just the exact same way that we we've, we access the menu every time. Just type in the same thing. Um, I have a file on here called uh, da -da -da, tape alignment. So... Um, one of the utilities that I've never be never able to run before was um, sometimes your tape deck will go out of alignment. Um, the heads just I guess move out of alignment. Uh, so the joys of old analog technology. Um, so there is actually a utility disc or a, a, like a, a utility tape um, that you can run. Uh, so I want to just hit it now. Adjust your input. It's a very simple um, little file. But had I not had this. Um, SDIC, I wouldn't be able to access this, and this is just it right here. Um, it just comes up with a prompt telling you to insert tape and press play, and then tighten the azimuth screw completely, loosen the azimuth. So it just there's a little screw on my tape deck right here, and uh, it's just it tells you um, while while you're playing the tape, it tells you if it's receiving the data well. There are probably like lots of other utilities. I'm not sure. What other ones? I think there are some that actually test your system and stuff, but I'm not. I've seen them on a cart, so I'm not sure if it'll definitely work um, using this technique. But I'm sure there are other utilities out there, and lots of. I mean, this just gives you access to so much software that. I mean, some of these games and software and stuff like that, it's hard to get a hold of on tape or even on disc. So um, this is just a great way to access all those things. So those are some of the features um, that the SD to IEC has. Um, but there are some downsides to this. I don't want to sugarcoat this completely. Um, there are a few things that I didn't realize going into this. Um, first of all, Commodore 64 emulation is not 100%. Um, and neither is this uh, SD to IEC. The, um, the emulation of the disk drive isn't 100%. Um, sometimes you'll have to try some different files to get things to work. Um, I, in general, I've actually found that not just with this product, but with um, even Commodore emulation. I, whenever a few years ago, whenever I uh, emulated a couple of games, they worked perfectly fine. Every game I tried worked after a bit of playing around. And actually, I sold my original hardware thinking that this uh, emulation is perfect. I don't need the actual hardware anymore. Um, it turns out it's not quite perfect. Um, there's still a lot of bugs. Um, I find them whenever I, even whenever I'm emulating this on my computer, I'm having to like look for all sorts of different files, and <clears throat> it's just it's not perfect. And uh, so I don't want anyone th that's thinking about buying this going into it thinking this is going to be great. It's going to load every game I've ever wanted. Um, you may have a bit of playing about on your hands, maybe even just looking for um, uh, better versions of some files. Um, that's what I find anyway.
what I've done is essentially um, create a folder on my computer that has what uh, files that I know are definitely working. Um, usually as a rule of thumb, if it's definitely working on the emulator on the computer, um, it usually works um, with the SDIEC. So those are a couple of minor little bugs I have with it, but again, I have to really remind you it's not specific to this unit or anything. Um, those emulation problems will happen with no matter what device you use. Um, hopefully it gets better eventually whenever like updates and stuff come out. Um, but other than those little things I mentioned, I'm really enjoying it. And uh, I would like to say again, um, thank you to Retro3000.com for sending me it. And uh, I'll put a link in the description. I'll put all sorts of links in the description so you can go and learn more about these. So thanks for watching this video. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Um, I don't know if I'll definitely be able to answer, but I'm sure someone will be able to. Um, so please leave a comment if you have anything you'd like to add about this um, system. Maybe you know something that uh, this does that I didn't mention. Feel free to comment below and uh, keep tuned for more Commodore 64 videos.